Joining us live from John Marshall High School is ABC6 News reporter Theodore Tollison, who has reactions from some of those who knew Finseth best. Theo. Maisie, Robin, Adam Finseth graduated from John Marshall back in 2001. Today, I spoke with three of his closest friends who are still grieving over Adam's death, but they are remembering him for the genuine and selfless friend he was. As many college players see their first exposure to Major League Baseball when team scouts come to see their talents each summer. But rarely does one come from a baseball family that has already had someone in the big leagues. ABC6 News reporter Theodore Tolliff said met up with some panhandlers to find out how they feel about this proposal. What are you hearing, Theo? Well, James, Robin, they're not taking this news very well at all. Many that I spoke to early today said that this move by RPD is horrifying and inhumane. Robin, almost 100 teachers ended their contracted workday alongside their students at 3.20 this afternoon here at Century High School. Their message is that they want to show how much they do for their students outside of their contracted work hours. Whether that's bringing work home, to lesson plan, to grade papers, so on and so forth. Uh, many teachers stay beyond their contracted time for bus duty. Um, so there's a lot of things that they do outside of the regular contract day that we want to raise awareness of. Negotiations between teachers and the school district have been ongoing for weeks and now both sides say they are close to a deal. I think uh, we deserve to get a fair compensation and we are so close right now that hopefully we can come to an agreement here in a couple of weeks. When you have um, the other side of the negotiations doing that fairly um, consistently over an extended period and now taking an, a, an additional next step. There's a point where I've got to make sure that I'm um, letting people know that this is a proposal that is solid. Rochester Education Association is asking for improvements in health care coverage, an increase in salary, and smaller class sizes to allow for more one-on-one -on -one time with students. I think the takeaway message is that Rochester, Rochester teachers know that we are worth uh, a reasonable contract settlement and that offer is on the table for the district. Superintendent Dr. Kent Pacal says the district's offer is within reason but finances are tight. When people say hey you and the you know union are close well slightly less than two million dollars is more than our budget for literacy um, and so uh, it's not chump change and there is a point where when you get to the level of increase we're at um, where you really have to say this is a really good contract and we need to be responsible stewards of the public's money. Until a settlement is reached, Rochester teachers will be ending their work days each Wednesday at the set time within their contracts. REA and RPS are set to meet once again at the negotiation table on Thursday, February 1st. Robin. The Winona prosecutor holding a press conference earlier today after charging the father of Madeline Kingsbury's children with her murder. We are learning Adam Fravel has been charged with two counts of second degree murder, but could potentially face additional charges in the future, including upgraded charges to first degree murder. This as the investigation continues. The prosecutor saying this is still in the very early stages. We are also learning new details about Maddie's disappearance thanks to a newly released criminal complaint. We have team coverage tonight tracking these new developments. We start with ABC6 News reporter Theodore Tollefson, who was at that press conference today. Theo, you've been looking over that criminal complaint, some disturbing information in there. Yeah, James, some very gruesome details were shared in that criminal complaint on what happened to Madeline Kinsbury on her final day. We did learn today that she was died by homicidal violence, though the exact cause of her death is still yet to be released. According to a criminal complaint, Madeline Kinsbury was found with a knotted towel wrapped around her head and neck on property maintained by the Fravel family. She was found in a gray fitted bedsheet tied up with black gorilla tape in a wooded area by Choice Cemetery, 10 miles north of Adam Fravel's hometown of Mabel and minutes away from his family's home. The tape and bedsheets match items found by investigators following their execution of a search warrant of the Fravel Kinsbury property on April 1st. The complaint shares video evidence of a person changing license plates on Kinsbury's van around 944 the morning of March 31st. 18 minutes later, the same person, court documents say, matches the general description of Fable and was filling up gas into the van at a Winona gas station. 
While that person has not been identified as Fravel, it's something prosecutors are looking into. As the complaint indicates, we stated it was an individual that was observed um, uh, changing license plates, and those are the type of issues that we would uh, want to identify uh, if this case goes to trial. Now, law enforcement did not provide any further details into their investigation of Madeline's death or what they have found evidence-wise. The next hearing for Frable takes place on July 20th. James? Theo, you spoke with this young woman's parents. I can't even begin to imagine what they're going through, but they kind of gave you a little bit of insight into who she was. Robin, that's right. Um, with all the family members I spoke with today, from aunts, uncles, siblings, and almost every one of her cousins, Darisha Bailey was truly the soul that cared for everyone in her life. She was a good kid, a good soul. Friends and family say Darisha Bailey Voth was there to listen and help them all at the best and worst of times. She um, had this presence about her that you would always want to be around her and spend time with her. She was such a lover girl for everybody. She gave so many chances to everybody. And even after Darisha and her family moved away from Rochester, she always made sure to come back and visit those still here. She would always make time to hang out with her uncle, her aunt. Even though we live two hours away, she would come. Once she got her driver license, she would come and down to see us, text us, tell us that she loves us. But early Sunday morning, the family got the tragic news that Darisha would never get to visit them again. That was like the worst news that you can get, you know? the person that you help raise. Not to even comprehend what was going on. I thought it was just a nightmare. She always come to visit me almost every uh, month. So from now on, I cannot see her. I don't know what to do with that. Darisha died after getting hit by a car in Forest Lake. The driver of that car now charged with third degree murder. And while the family will hope for justice in the court system, they're holding on to their memories of Darisha. Memories like a family trip to Thailand in January. It opened her life. When she came back, she's like, I'm gonna graduate, auntie. I'm gonna go to college and be a veterinarian. I wanna help out. I wanna go to, to travel around the world and save anything, any animals, any person out there. One of my memories with, with her in Cambodia was, you know, we had all the nieces and um, her aunts all sitting around the table and I, I brought them three different types of bugs to try and she was, she did it. <laughs> she did it. No, no, no questions asked. She just did it. And with such a compassionate and nourishing impact on her family, they will never forget her impact on them. Even though her life is short, she made the best of it. She, her caring heart. So that's how we will remember her as a caring, loving person. You know, with a strong personality. Like I said, she has the strongest personality. That's how she got all the cousins together, all 23 of them. There will be a candlelight vigil for Darisha up in Forest Lake this evening around 8 p.m. There is also a GoFundMe page to donate funeral funds for the family, and you can find that on our website at kaltv.com. Sunday morning, graduates from John Marshall's class of 2001 woke up to tragedy. Their classmate and friend, Adam Finseth, was one of the three first responders killed while responding to a domestic call in Burnsville. You know, I think for anyone going through this, it's just a... a shock, right? Like you just can't, can't think that this is actually happening. Many of Adam's friends are remembering him for the size of his heart that had a space for every one of his friends and family members. He just had a very strong connection and genuine like just love for everyone that he touched. Creating friendships that lasted a lifetime. When we get the chance to get together it's like we've never 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 separated. We, even though it's sometimes a year or two before we can we can see each other again it's almost like there was there was no time in between at all. Adam was the friend you could call for help on anything. Needed every shingle of my roof of my house and um, Adam was one of a few of my friends that uh, showed up um, showed up with tools and everything and he stayed stayed and helped me with it you know as long as he could. And he carried on that selflessness with him into his career with the army and later as a paramedic and firefighter in Hastings, Savage and Burnsville. Seeing him go to the military uh, and serving, I mean, uh, you couldn't be more proud of, of, of your friend. Uh, and then him coming back and, and serving as a, a firefighter and a medic. Couldn't be more proud of him. 
uh, and knowing that he never changed. But there's one word all of Adam's friends want him to be remembered by. I guess I'd, if I could sum it up in one word, I mean, I, as a hero. He's just a hero. Yeah, yeah he, he was a hero. Um, before any of this happened, he was a hero. And for all who came to know Adam Finseth, he will forever remain their hero. For the time being, the GoFundMe page for Adam Finseth has been paused at the request of the family. The memorial honoring Finseth as well as officers Paul Elmstrand and Matthew Rouge is still open at the Burnsville City Hall. Maisie, Robin, 